We write the software, we build the control system, we're a UL panel shop, so we have capabilities that we've never had before, and it, it's going to allow us to wash the car more efficiently and safer and, and have some really cool control systems to put out the best quality car we've ever, we've ever been able to produce. Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of the Modern Car Wash Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Zelaznik, and I am the Director of Marketing for Hoffman Development, which, if you don't know, operates Hoffman Car Wash, Hoffman Jiffy Lube, and Innovated Car Wash Equipment. Now, this podcast will live in or on the Innovated space, um, but it is not a Innovated commercial, infomercial the purpose of this podcast is to share experience and knowledge to operators around the country and around the world. Uh, today's first episode, our guest is Tom Hoffman Jr., who is the owner and CEO of Hoffman Development, and in my biased opinion, one of the most knowledgeable minds in the industry today. Uh, we touch on several different topics, including the family history, uh, opening a new location and a new office during the COVID era, uh, as well as incorporating technology into car washes and the future of car wash, not only in 2021, but years down the road. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So Tom Jr., welcome to the Modern Car Wash podcast. You have the privilege of being our first guest. All right. Thanks, Kevin. All right. So we wanted to start, obviously, with uh, uh, you know a big name, I guess. Not only are you the owner and CEO of Hoffman Development, but you've been around. Um, you've been in this industry, and the, the family has been immersed in this industry for, for a long time. So um, you know, just hoping to get some insight and... You know, you look at Hoffman Development, Hoffman Car Wash, Hoffman Jiffy Lube, uh, Buy Rider Franchise, and, and most recently, Innovate It. And um, we were talking before the show, and I think it's important for people to know that this really isn't about Innovate It, right? This is more or less, we want to spread knowledge to operators around the country on best practices and, and, and some insight. So I really do appreciate you um, spending the time and coming in. So. Before we get into all of the, the history of the Hoffman family and the car wash, you recently opened up your 18th tunnel location yep. um, just north of here. So, you know, talk about that and how, how's it going so far? Well, it's a car wash that's kind of, you know, it's right in the middle of our market. It's near one of our busiest locations in Latham, New York. And um, we always love building new car washes because it gives us a chance to try new ideas and you know experiment and what's great about this place is it's really close to home so it's it's easy to incorporate new ideas and and um and hopefully make them work really great hmm. especially I, for our customers i never really thought about that, how how it's really it's in your backyard right so yep. it's from a uh research and development standpoint i mean it doesn't get any better than that other than maybe having the the car wash right. inside the, the warehouse um you know you uh, broke ground but you know you had to manage this through a pandemic uh, yeah we did we lost i think it was eight or ten weeks of construction time so we're, we're opening a little late we just opened you know a couple of weeks ago and um it, it was a challenge you know we were hoping we were going to be able to build it and get it open before the winter and fortunately we, we just made it the company's open this is the third car wash in the last three or four years i, I know uh there's more in development currently. What have you learned over the last three years about opening a new wash, uh, and has it gotten easier? Uh, yeah, we're getting a little better at it because we're accelerating our development cycle. Um, you know, we have a lot of great people working in our company. We want to leverage our talent, you know, the talent we have, and it also helps um, create opportunities for our existing employees to percolate up into the organization as they 
learn and grow. So um, it's, it's exciting for everybody because they can, you know, be the manager of the location, the team lead, and we, and we, we just love building new locations, especially because of the new ideas and, and being able to stay on the cutting edge of, of car washing. Sure. Sp- staying on the cutting edge side of things, what, what does the tunnel look like? Or even the back room at uh, it, Route 7 is what we refer to yep. it inside. Uh, just that's the road that it's on. But uh, can you just walk us through what, what it actually looks like? Right. So the property, um, it was actually a good deal. Um, it was you know, a, a great find for us to buy it. And it was a little wider and a little bigger. So we made the equipment room a little wider. We made the wash tunnel a little wider. And what what you realize when you see the finished product is how much easier it is to work in this location, especially when you're washing cars, not getting soaking soaking wet. And in the equipment room, we just had a lot of room to space things, you know, a little better and a little easier for everybody to work on. Um, You know, the new technology, you know, we're, we're controlling all the variable frequency drives over ethernet now that, that that's a new feature we're going to be able to actually feel the car because we're getting real-time feedback from the motor control system and in, into uh, the control systems that we build you know we write the software we build the control system we're a ul panel shop so we have capabilities that we've never had before and it it's going to allow us to wash the car more efficiently and safer and, and have some really cool control systems to put out the best quality car we've ever we've ever been able to produce. What I think is pretty cool is you don't have to necessarily be there to manage it, right? Like you can log into your computer, oh, yeah. and, and, and um, which is is kind of fascinating to me when you when you think about it. Uh, and I know you, you touched on the size of the property, and I was thinking about this the other day is when you walk through the back room. I mean, you could certainly drive a car to, <laughs> through the yeah, back room. I, I kind of equate it to old Yankee Stadium to new Yankee Stadium. Uh, basically, no room on the concourse to, you know, yep. a football field uh, length, length wide. So um, it's just interesting to see how, if, and you can see the progression of the stores, um, kind of the, the store that we opened three years ago, just north of here. We oh, fo- yeah. we've followed that model. It, the buildings look the same. It's become part of the brand, but you can see in Route 7 how, you know, those little tweaks or the little bit, the bigger size, whatever it is. Yep. Um, and, and that's because of the unlimited washing programs. And I think the whole car wash industry, it, it kind of caught us by surprise that our model maybe isn't changing as fast as it should have because we're washing so many more cars now that we, we need bigger pieces of property. You know, we need bigger tunnels so that we can wash more cars per hour. So we, we can have more equipment, um, you know, and we, when we need more room for that equipment package, in, even in the back room with the additional pumps, you know, labor is changing, you know, especially in New York State with minimum wage rising, that we, we know that we're gonna need to wash cars more efficiently with less labor. So that means we have to automate the tunnel and install more equipment to clean the car as well as we used to with all the people we used to have. You know, we're, we're going to have fewer employees in the future. Right. And I guess I never really even thought of that. If you look at the layout of that tunnel, you've given yourself room to grow or subtract or however you yep. want. It's not like you put the equipment in and, you know, for the next hundred years, that's how it's going to be. You've, you've allowed yourself to make those changes. You know, uh, I referenced the uh, the car wash that was open a few years ago, and it was right at the time I started with this company, and uh, we were trying to position it, and we positioned it as the most advanced car wash in the world, and uh, it was a little hyperbolic, but it, it, it wasn't. I mean, there was technology in that tunnel that had never been used before, um, and now it seems like we're making it up. Op- I don't want to say obsolete, but it seems that this new car wash is above that. Yeah. Would you say? Well, I mean, is it? Would you put Route Seven as one of the most advanced car well, washes in the world? Especially because of being able to feel the car. You know, the motor. You know, it's an all-electric wash process now. So the the motors use power to spin the brushes. And the variable frequency drives can feel the torque of the motor, and the amperage. And, and now we have real-time feedback, and we can release the pressure against the car with, a, with an air cylinder 
So the air pressure is constantly changing to have the right touch on, on, the, on the vehicle. So we're really feeling it. You know, we're feeling the customer's car to help wash it safer. We're bumping around the front, you know, to, to get around the corner to, to clean the front rocker panel. We're, we're um, moving the brush away from the mirror so we don't flip it. And so the customer has a better experience. So it's all about, you know, having a different wash process and, and having the customer experience be the best that it, that it, that it can be. So when you, do, you, do you set out to accomplish that or is that something you discover along the way? It's like, hey, I have this idea uh, or you see something that says, what if we did this, this, we can actually feel it or, yeah. or, or was it in your mind you're like, I have to figure this out? Well, it's, you know, we're always looking at new control systems and sensors and things are improving in electronics and control systems and the computers. and. When you see all these individual things, you, you can, you know, because of our experience, we can relate it to a car wash process, you know, which is really a factory producing clean cars. So we come up with these ideas because of our experience and incorporate them into the wash process, especially if it can improve the quality or the safety or the customer experience. Gotcha. I, I feel like we could probably sit here all day and talk to you about technology. And um, I, I do want to shift gears a little bit and, and talk about your history and the family's history. Um, you know, 18 tunnels, nine Jiffy Loops. We kind of uh, uh, went through the, the kind of the resume or whatever. Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, is that that happened this year was this new office. Um, we moved in and at the beginning of November. Again, it was delayed because of COVID. Um, but just take us through this process oh, yeah. here and, and what you envisioned and how it ended up. And well, it's kind of funny, though. It started in my mom and dad's house in a spare bedroom. That's where the office was. All the way up until like 1988 or 89. And then we built a big full-serve car wash and we decided to put offices on the on the roof, basically. <laughs> on top of the wash yeah. process. So we've been there since 1990 and we, we just outgrew it. We kept expanding our business, building new locations. We ran out of room. You know, I haven't had an office in 10 years, I think. I got kicked out <laughs> yeah. years ago. So so now we're in a, a new, real, really professional uh, work environment and office and it feels like it's gonna be a game changer. I don't even think we realize how good this is gonna be because now we have more room to expand, you know, to hire people, to have really a lot of our people under the same roof now for collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, Innovated is here, you know, our equipment company building building equipment in the back. So it's really, really going to be handy to have everybody working together and collaborating and, and growing our company. It's it's funny, and people don't, don't know this, the full serve that we moved into, how, how long is that tunnel, would you say? Well, yeah, the tunnel is uh, 133 feet long. Right. And... Uh, I don't even know how many yeah. people we had up there. We were, yeah, 30 by 150 <laughs> yeah. was the size of the office, actually. We were to the point where um, even if we could come back with the restrictions of COVID, we couldn't because you couldn't even really... Yeah, we were walk. on top of each other. Yeah, you couldn't yeah. walk down the hall without... Um, yeah. one, uh, one bathroom. Yeah, it, yeah. It, was not, um, it was not ideal for the situation, but it kind of all worked out here. And I think you're right. And I think you've seen that all, already with the staff is... Um, more collaboration just uh, I think it's kind of opened up a, like you said it's it's opened up some floodgates oh, as yeah. far as um, uh, uh, how we can all work together and produce ideas and much more professional work environment too so <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. exactly even something like this podcast I you know I think that kind of stemmed from the everyone being together and thinking of of ideas and things that we wanted to accomplish and to be honest with you, I don't know where we would have recorded or filmed this right. uh, in the old office. So here we are. So um, you talked about your mom and dad. They started the, started the business working out of their house. When did you get involved? Well, I mean, in the 60s, I was separating nickels and <laughs> or dimes and quarters from our self-serve car wash business. It was 35 cents for a cycle. And then straightening out dollar bills out of a out of a bill changer before they had stackers, so I, I can't remember not being okay. involved. So, yeah, I've I've always been in it. You know, I love to plow snow and drive vehicles. Like I was 12 years old plowing snow. Um, <laughs> you, know, you, you can't get away with <laughs> you that these days. Get away with that now. But no. it was fun. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> um, 
it seemed like the progression for you then was uh, you were snow removal, uh, change oh, yeah. collector, sucking mud out of sucking the pits. mud, at, yeah. doing everything. And then there was a time where it seemed that the uh, you started bringing technology into the washes. Yep, I always enjoy technology. And in eleventh grade, um, you know, we got our first home computer for business, and I taught myself how to program in in the basic computer language. And then I took these classes here and there, you know, electricity classes. I just got um, I, I started having a passion for electricity and controls. And we started building our own equipment, our own tunnel control systems, and it, it just kind of snowballed. You know, my education, the, the best part about it was it was really in the business, you right. know, from l learning from vendors, from electricians, taking quick little courses here and there around the Northeast. And, um, you know, the best experience is working in the business. Is there one uh, maybe product or uh, that you worked on that was like the first thing that you really incorporated the well it was probably building our own tunnel controllers was a big deal because normally people would buy them from one of the vendors in the industries but building your own control systems because we wrote you know I, I wrote the software I built the control system and it was pretty risky you know and then we um, we worked with Joe Enning from Mr. Wash in Germany we brought over um, his traveling wheel blaster, we automated that and made it, you know, made, made it a lot better. Actually, it automatically adjusts to the to the conveyor speed. Um, so we've always, you know, tried to build new things and new ideas. And I think the key to a successful business is being able to differentiate yourself from the competition, you know, and and of course in a better way, have a you know a better experience for the customer, better quality, uh, better production. You know, being able to wash, you know, more cars to keep people from waiting in long lines. So um, we, we just love to do that. love to build new equipment. What, uh, was it hard to convince your father to let you do this stuff? Well, my father was actually remarkably um, flexible with what I wanted to do. He really um, allowed me to do a lot of things. And I'm telling you, I made a ton of mistakes <laughs> building equipment, you know, shutting down car washes because I wrote the program wrong. Um, yeah, he really allowed me free reign on, on developing things and innovating, you know, our, our company. Um, you know, you have to be allowed to make mistakes, I think. I, I think that's very interesting. That's how you learn. That, like in anything, and, and it's funny when you think about, uh, if you look at today, if you were implementing new software or whatever it was, like we said, you can almost do it remotely or you can oh, model yeah. it uh, to do it. Back then, it was trial and error. Right? Oh, yeah. And, um, yep. Uh, so um, it's funny to hear that you've closed. And that's the thing now. I mean, we have so many people that support our operation now. You know, we have five other programmers now. It's not it's not just me anymore breaking things, and, <laughs> and we're much more professional and careful. And uh, we're, we're really doing some great things now with some really good people. We have a kind of a running joke here is just the size of our IT department and how it's grown. Oh yeah. Um, we had a, a quarterly meeting and. Uh, our president had shown the ID de IT department, I don't know what it was, maybe like 10 years ago, and it was basically you. Oh, that yeah. was it. Yeah. And now I, you can't even count on two hands how many IT. Um, well, car washes are really information technology companies now, especially because of the unlimited programs. Like, we can't do anything anymore without our IT department being involved because it's going to involve either um, sophisticated equipment, you know, the computers. Um, or, or data, you know, we're, we're becoming a big data company with, you know, keeping track of all of our customers in, in the uh, unlimited programs. I think this is a good segue into kind of where we're heading, uh, not just Hoffman development, but, but the car wash industry in general. Mm -hmm. um, so when you look five, ten years out, what do you see? Well, more automation for sure. Um, customers are really starting to demand less contact with our employees. So automated kiosks and tellers um you know less employees that, that they have to interact with i think they want um you know the unlimited programs you know really started to take off during the pandemic you know people wanted to pay with their phones and that's the other thing i think our our smartphones are going to turn into our point of sale system so you know fortunately the point of sale vendors have stepped up and and are, are keeping up with that change um you know and then the car wash process automating uh, is going to be important. You know, putting out a better car with less people. We're 
by the time this podcast airs, it will, it will be after January, but we're recording it just before Christmas. And, you know, 2021 uh, is hopefully teeing up to be a different year than yeah. 2020. Um, how has uh, the company handled COVID uh, and dealing with that? And, you know, obviously that's going to be a challenge in the early part of 2021. So if you could touch on that, but after that, what do you see in 2021 being bigger challenges, not bigger challenges, but other challenges, or what's the biggest challenge do you think facing yep. operators? Well, so for COVID, I think businesses have a responsibility to keep their employees safe and their customers safe. So we implemented new procedures, especially at our full service car washes. We were disinfecting the driver's uh, area before and after our service. Um, you know, we had a strict mask policy. So, you know, to keep our employees safe, you know, everybody was wearing a mask. Um, we also had to really lobby and fight for our business and our industry to be open. We were closed for 35 days in March, April timeframe. And um, we had to prove that, you know, we are an essential business. You know, we're taking care of customers' vehicles. We were taking care of police agencies while we were closed, actually. We were opening for them. So, that, that was a struggle and we, we learned a lot and we, you know, survived it and we're lucky to be in this industry because we, we were able to, you know, to be open most of the time. Um, and as far as for 2021, I, again, I think um, I, I, I worry about the economy, but fortunately, again, we're in a, a business that's essential and we're going to keep expanding and providing opportunities for our, you know, for our employees and, and having more locations for our customers moving into new markets especially so um you know I, I don't think this is over with yet and um you know but i'm optimistic for the future and the vaccine and i think things are are, are going to be much better in 21 than they were this year so talking about expansion and, and how the unlimited program and car washes have been deemed essential business uh hoffman car wash could potentially open two new locations next year um which is uh, uh, operators do it. Um, for us, that would be the most in in, in one year. Uh, obviously, you're fighting kind of COVID restrictions in place. Um, do you think you're going to have any issues? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I guess it's kind of fortunate that the silver lining of COVID is, you know, as an essential business, you know, we feel motivated to continue our growth and you know we have six or seven locations in the pipeline over the next few years and you know i've heard that commercial real estate is kind of slowing down and big contractors are looking for work so we should be able to efficiently expand and maybe even save a little money on on our future development so that that's another reason why we think you know 2021 and 2022 are, are going to be good years for us and for the industry Tom, we're going to put a pin in it there. Um, I really appreciate you coming on, being our first guest. Uh, I hope our audience enjoys it, and hopefully you'll be back right, thanks, at Kevin. some point. Thanks. Thank you. So episode one of the Modern Car Wash podcast is in the book. Special thanks to Tom Hoffman Jr. for being our first guest. We'll be back in two weeks with Shane Groff, who oversees research and development for Innovate It. Uh, the podcast is still very new, so please spread the word. Uh, tell your friends. Uh, you can also subscribe so you can stay up to date on new episodes. If you have any questions or topics that you would like covered, feel free to email us at social at Until next time, Happy New Year.